Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. With James Holst and Pat McSherry and the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Look at that fish. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Welcome to this week's episode of In-Depth Outdoors. I'm Pat McSherry. And on today's episode, I'm headed down south to meet up with Dave Koontz on Pool 10 of the Mississippi River. Now we're gonna target walleyes on today's show, but doing something that I've never done before, and that's hand lining. Dave Koontz is super experienced in this type of fishing, and where it really shines is in areas where it's deeper water, that 18 to 25 feet, but has really heavy current. And that's what we're faced with today. So it's Dave Koontz and I, this week on In-Depth Outdoors. Wait then first, right? Wait before bait. Yes, sir. So how do we do this? The uh, first one that catches the fish has to buy dinner? We can do that. <laughs> I feel pretty confident in my bait selection. <laughs> there you go. All right, we're just getting going for the day here. We're on pool 10 of the Mississippi River with Dave Poons and uh, we're doing a little bit different approach to walleye fishing today. It's something I've never done, Dave's done it a ton, and that's uh, hand line with the walleyes. And basically this is an awesome technique to use when you're in a situation where it's a little bit deeper water and then where there's a lot of flow. So we have a pound and a quarter weight down there and we're able to run two crankbaits off of that main line and uh, it's pretty deadly effective. So hopefully we'll uh, be on the fish here in a bit. Yes, sir. Oh, you on there? I nope. got one. Do we? Doubled yep. up? <laughs> oh yeah, he's on there. All right. Doubles. So basically what we're doing we're fishing kind of heavy current and a little bit deeper water and using these hand lining rigs and heavy weights to get these crankbaits down to the bottom. And this is something Dave has done for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> been doing it for quite a while. It's kind of nice though, like you can put those number seven, nine floating Rapalas right, right in the face of those walleyes in 20 feet of water with in the main channel and pound and a quarter to two pound weights is what keeps those baits down there. And then they just kind of follow upstream. They just kind of follow each other right up. If you're into 25 feet, back up into 17 feet type of deal. There you go. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it just basically puts the bait right in front of their face. Little guy, starter fish. What do you got? Well, I got one that wants to play in the... Oh, oh yeah. Doesn't count. <laughs> doesn't count. That was a nice fish. Yeah, that was a nicer fish. Oh, there's a good one. There's some weight here. Nice. I wonder which one he came on. So I got a husky jerk in that UV, is that pink? And I've got a hot steel F9 on. Sometimes I like to bet, okay, which one he come on? And I'm going with, I'm going with the husky jerk. <laughs> got more faith in the pink UV. Well, I went and doubled you up. <laughs> yeah, you got one on? <laughs> yeah, I do. Nice. <laughs> well, I am correct. Mine came on the husky jerk. There we go. So Pat, I'm gonna have you stand up because yep. I'll try to. I try to keep these right in the boat, right in the live well, because they make a mess. Oh, see? <laughs> Come on. There we go. I'm gonna get that guy back right away. But here's that bait. 
and that is just a original floating Rapala with that bladed treble on the back. What'd you catch yours on? I got mine on the Husky Jerk. Yeah, on the pink UV Husky Jerk. And uh, there's a nice male. He's about 19 inches long. We're not keeping any fish, so he gets a free pass. Yep. Perfect. So here's the basic setup. Now, Dave can probably explain the workings of this a little bit better than I can. I'm pretty new to this deal, but basically we got a spool up front with cable line on it. And then you have a, you call this a shank, right? Yep. So this is a shank that basically has your leads to connect to. And then you got the heavy weight at the bottom. That's what's obviously, we're feeling this hit the bottom. We're able to kind of raise our hands up and down, kind of making sure that we're just hitting the bottom here and there, making sure we're close, correct? Yep, perfect. And then uh, basically we're having our leads come off of that. And the top lead is, you're running what, 10 feet? So the, there's a five and a 15. The five top one will be a 15, yep. Okay. Basically we're running them stacked in tandem, you know, because the top one's got more line out. Yep. It's falling back further. And then the front one's basically going just in front of it. Yeah, so they just follow each other. Mm -hmm. And by, by setting them up with the second clevis and the fourth clevis, you can get that so they're not, one's not digging into the bottom and the other one is, or vice versa. They just kind of follow each other and just a couple inches off the bottom. Rain, boat spray, wind, and if you're unlucky enough, even snow. When your drive to work is a highway of water, you need outerwear that you can count on day after day, week after week, year after year. The Rapala Rain Pro and the Rapala Rain Jacket and bibs are exceptionally crafted using premium materials and fitted for comfort. With the right gear, you can weather the storm. Backed by a legendary name you can trust. At Eskimo, we have the tools to help you enjoy your time on the ice. We say man needs food, clothing, and shelter. When it comes to shelter, we like the Outbreak 450i with its full-size no-trip door that's nearly 74% bigger than a standard door, making it much easier to load and unload. With 75 square feet of fishable area, you'll be warm and comfortable during your day on the ice. Check out the Outbreak 450i and our full line of products at GetEskimo.com. What lies beneath can no longer hide. New Mega Imaging Plus uses high-frequency sonar to show you fish and structure up to 200 feet below your boat and 200 feet out to either side. No more secrets, no more guesswork, just a clearer picture of the world below, down to a fish's species and direction. Because more detail means more of this. Only from Humminbird. Having a hard time finding the gear you need to get your boat ready for spring? At Reed Sports, we have a huge inventory of Hummingbird, Garmin, and Lowrance Electronics, including the Garmin LiveScope all-season bundle with a $200 rebate. We have the largest inventory in the Midwest, but act now. It won't last long. Give us a call at 800-346-0019 or find everything for your boat at reedsports.com, where we offer the best service, best price, best advice. Guaranteed. I got another fish, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, they've been coming in twos pretty well, so get her down there. Yep. I'm gonna. I'm just for fun. I'm gonna say I caught this on the hot steel. We got to give that bait a little love today. We're gonna see what happens. He's wanting to play on your side of the boat, Pat. Yeah. Oh yeah, another nice fish. So the slot limit now, they got a new slot on the on the river for walleyes. Um, before it was anything over 15, you could keep six fish, and they put a slot where the 15 to 20 inch now. So this one here, I'm guessing would fit that slot. But what a nice male walleye. I mean, mm -hmm. these are the perfect eaters to be eating. Oh, big time. Another one tallied for the pink UV. Yep. He measures out it. Right at 19 inches. 19 inches. There's gonna be a good 
population of slot fish coming up here um, that we won't be able to touch, which will be good. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons that I don't just set my hand over here and drag it on the bottom is I like to I like to keep that distance. There's that shank has clevises every six inches and you can set your leads for length and height to keep those baits right in the fish zone. So as, as I'm trolling along a half a mile an hour to a mile an hour, I'm bouncing that bottom. I'm constantly just ticking, feeling that bottom. And watch my graph. If I'm in 20 feet of water and I'm slipping out to 25, I gotta let a little more line out, but I'm always bouncing. Bouncing to make sure I'm ticking the bottom, but yet knowing what's on the bottom. Knowing if I'm in the rocks or if I'm in the sand, and uh, you kind of want to stick to the rocky, rocky bottom. But it's a definite feel when you got the cable to a pound and a quarter weight. You can definitely tell what's down there on the bottom. There we go. <laughs> on the board again. Another fish. What's he coming on? I'm guessing. 50-50 chance. Original floater. There you go. Actually, I might have to take that husky jerk or switch colors or something on that because that thing hasn't caught a fish yet. Yeah, we'll have to fix that then. Keeps wanting to come in behind the boat here. That's a nice fish, dude. There we go. Nice. Nice fish there. Yeah. Super healthy. There we go. He just had that tail tail hook nipped right in the corner of the mouth. He wasn't coming off though. There we go. Good job. Super nice fish there. What? That's got to be a 21? Oh, yeah. 21, 22? Definitely. Super nice male, but... Thick. Now I got to keep that husky jerk on yeah. for a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get that fish back. Good job. Down he goes. You handled that very well, Pat. In-depth outdoors, spot on the spot ID. On this week's Spot on the Spot ID, I'm going to be giving a quick explanation of the areas that Dave and I were targeting on the Mississippi River. Now, first and foremost, what you're looking for are current swept shorelines. That's going to be the biggest odds that you're going to be fishing hard bottom rocks, areas where the walleyes are wanting to spawn. And it's really easy to pick those spots out on your side imaging on your hummingbird, as well as if you're hand lining or, or doing like a three-way rig, you can actually feel that bottom. And when it hits that rock, you know, you can definitely tell that versus a soft bottom. So what we were doing to actually target these fish once we had narrowed down an area that we thought would be a high percentage spot where those fish would be spawning is just pulling into the current at about three quarters to one mile an hour. And one of the big things with that is making sure that you're covering a little bit of depth range. I think we started out in kind of that 18 and went as deep as 24 feet of water. And we're basically just zigzagging back and forth as we're pulling into the current. And moving those baits back and forth uh, allowed us to kind of key in on certain depth ranges and keeping those baits down there in the strike zone the entire time. And that's one of the big things with hand lining. It's super efficient to be able to drop that pound and a quarter weight down, have two crankbaits right in the strike zone in a matter of seconds is pretty cool. Now there are a few other ways that you could target these fish, I'm sure. I know the current, the actual flow is down quite a bit, which makes it really possible to do three-way rigs in these areas. Uh, you're just gonna be letting out quite a bit more line to get that bait back there down towards the bottom. And then uh, if your boat was outfitted with downriggers, uh, that'd be another great way to be able to just drop that ball down, run a couple crankbaits right down by the bottom. So if you're looking to get out in the coming weeks, uh, keep these ideas in mind. Uh, look for the current swept shorelines, hard bottom areas where walleyes are gonna wanna spawn. And then baits that really shine under these cold temperatures are gonna be those husky jerks, original floaters, jointed rapalas. Those are great, cool water producers to get on some Mississippi River walleyes.
Available in six technique specific models. The new custom series spinning rods from Akuma offer tournament grade performance at a price all anglers can afford. Built on SCT blank technology featuring a dual helix carbon fiber wrap, Deadeye Custom Series rods offer an ultra responsive blank that will handle the biggest walleye on your favorite bodies of water. Find the Deadeye Custom Series at your favorite sporting goods store today and see for yourself why Okuma is Inspire Fishing. On the water, every second counts. So when there's a fish at three o'clock, be right on time with Mega 360 Imaging. Every sweep of our newest technology offers 125 feet of absolute clarity all around your boat. So you can see fish and every detail in every direction. With a clearer picture of what's below, you can catch fish like clockwork. Mega 360 Imaging, only from Humminbird. Introducing Suffix Advanced Fluorocarbon. A new level of suppleness. A new level of toughness. A new level of sensitivity. A new category of fluorocarbon. Hello, future. Oh, there, oh, there's one. Oh boy. Get your live well open for you. Thank you. Come on the husky jerk. Just in the corner of the mouth too. <laughs> hey, come on to my side. So, another nice male. We usually don't get any females out here. Females are in the, kind of the shallows, dropping their eggs, and the current kind of washes the eggs out here. And then males are all out here taking care of them. But another one bites the dust, but he gets a free pass. All right. Have you ever tried to target the females up a little shallower? So. Is that more of a nighttime thing? I have. What I like to do is oh. I'll do like the post-spawn females where not necessarily trying to get them when they're spawning or getting them up there because I usually I've tried haven't had much luck but post spawn where now that they're done they're sitting back in a pool of deeper mm -hmm. water this shines because we could pull a little bit bigger baits you can go to a shad body bait too and stuff like that yeah and find some nice post spawn walleyes and mm -hmm. I've done that before that should be coming up now because most of the females are all drop their eggs yeah oh there's another one <laughs> Feels like another good one too. Really? Yeah. So you just pulled them up and cleaned that moss off, dropped it right back down and boom. Yep. Yeah, there is a little bit of debris and just kind of that, I'm surprised it's already green, that yeah. moss. Yeah. There's just a little bit of that growing that gums up your bait and then it doesn't run right. They like to play on the wrong side of the boat, don't they? <laughs> yeah, they do. There we go. Another nice male. Yeah. That came on the, it's basically been toe to toe, the husky jerk versus the original floater there. Yeah. But nice fish. Super nice fish, as you can see, definitely melting. I think we're getting probably towards the tail end of the spawn now yep. at this point. Yeah, but, I do believe so. Mm hmm. Get them back. So there's that bait. This is a custom color that you had painted up, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's a lot like that hot olive, but. Yep. Yeah. And then, uh, just added a little trick to it, put the VMC hybrid on the back, and, yep. and it definitely makes a definitely makes a difference. Mm -hmm. That's that bladed hybrid treble. There's a cool yeah. little addition to any bait, really. I like it. Adds a little bit of flash. Yep. Make sure that bait's running good. And then just slowly drop it back. Oh, there, oh boy. There's a good one. You can definitely tell the little bit better ones from the from the little guys. Oh yeah, yeah. This guy here was just like a bass. He just shaking and <laughs> bouncing and popping. This time of year, I don't know if it's the hand line that I feel more than because the rod, but these things just feel like they fight and they just way more excitable than normal. Mm -hmm. Oh, you switched. He switched to the <laughs> jointed and got one right away on I it. I did. 
Oh, I did. I switched to a custom J7, custom painted, and I didn't have that one down 30 seconds, and mm -hmm. he smoked it. He wasn't coming off either. Nope. Double hooked. There we go. Another nice fish, probably what, 18, yep. 17, 18 inches? Cookie cutter. I mean, that's kind of been the average. Yeah, and they're melting big right now, so yeah. they're, they're still going good. They'll be around for a while. But just custom colors, come up with your own ideas, and you find somebody who is more artistic than I am, <laughs> and they can make some cool baits. Mm -hmm. And those are pretty much your top producing baits, those three kind of just the original floater, the jointeds, and then the husky jerks. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Those are all great cold water producers. Yeah. Oh, there's a good one. That feels pretty good, too. You can hand that off to me, too, if you want. Okay. Let's just keep it. I'm in, I've been in 20 to 23 feet of water. Mm-hmm. So the biggest thing is you're just looking for hard bottom, right? Yeah, you look for gra good gravel bottom. Yep. I mean, there's spots like this all up and down the rivers. I mean, any pool, every pool, uh, if they're just there. You all, and this is a perfect way to find it. That weight bouncing on the bottom, if you're just out searching, trying to scout out, you can find it real easy with, with weights like this. Yeah. Look at that. Nice fish. Yeah. How long will this bite last? So usually from start to finish, it's about a three week window-ish. Yeah. Um, a little before, a little after. So water temperatures start creeping in that 42 degrees. That's just the start of it. Up until like mid fifties um, is when she'll end. But that's an over. Uh, definitely is an over 20 on that one. Oh yeah. Nice fish. <laughs> Randall GM in Aiken, Minnesota's only haggle-free Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealer is a proud sponsor of In-Depth Outdoors TV. Our Brandel value price ensures that you don't have to spend your entire day haggling to get a great deal. And every new vehicle comes with our exclusive gimmick-free lifetime powertrain warranty. Whether you're in need of service, sales, parts, or body shop repair, stop by our state-of-the-art facility in Aiken or visit us 24-7 at BrandelGM.com. Glacial Lakes Dock is now Glacial Lakes Recreation. Located in Starbuck, Minnesota, we offer the same great location, staff, and service with a new name to better fit our ever-expanding business. As an authorized dealer and service center for Yeti and now Alumalite Ice Houses, we have you covered if you're looking for a new house or just need a little service. Stop in today or check us out online at glaciallakesrec.com and make this ice season your most enjoyable and comfortable ever. I got one now. There we go. All right. Pass the remote back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, this is another good one too. Boy, it's funny. They, it's kind of like you're just kind of taking them for a ride back there. Yep. They don't. I mean, once you kind of get them just coming forward, it's not like they're fighting super hard. Right. You know? Average size is great. Yeah. That came on that new jointed I put on. Nice. Well, that's a nice fish too. Yeah. Heck of a nice fish. There He's got to go. be low 20s, right? Oh, yeah. Nice fish there. I just put that bait on. I'll get that fish back right away, but super nice male. They've all been really nice. But here's a jointed number seven Rappler there. That's a brook trout. I just put that on, and heck, it didn't take more than five, 10 minutes yeah. to catch that one on that bait. So get that one back down. There's a little guy. Fish on? Yeah, not too big, but. 
He's on there. Uh, actually, either he's really small. No, he's still on there. Or he came off. But. Boy, efficiency. That's what this is all about. It is. If you were wanting to fill the box, yeah. it would not take long. You're not kidding. <laughs> no, you get you get dialed in and just working side to side is more important than going straight north. Mm -hmm. That's a um, good point. I've been watching you do that. Yeah. You're just you know sliding. You're, you're sliding back and forth and you're keeping that bait right in the strike zone. So yep. I mean obviously we're fishing on a on a brake line, but we're kind of in a flat really where it's yeah. It's not a sharp break, right? You know, like like a traditional lake would be. You'd have those mm -hmm. sharp breaks. It's a gradual slope. <laughs> then you go catch a, I don't know, 17, 18 incher maybe. Yeah. Perfect eater. Yeah. They're just good. This population of these fish are really good right now. There we go. So what Dave's talking about with with making sure that you're just kind of sliding back and forth is he's using the kicker to kind of keep us going in motion just so we don't kill the trolling motor batteries, but he's using the Minkota Altera to actually steer and we're just nosing right into the current and we're just kind of hovering back and forth, keeping us going, what, about three quarters of a mile an hour? Yeah, I like to go just under a mile an hour um, and sometimes when you slide, you'll pop over a mile an hour, but if you get up too high, you know you're cutting across too fast. Yeah. Exactly. So he's just hovering, sliding back and forth, keeping those baits right in the strike zone, which has been kind of that 20 to 22 feet of water. And uh, it's, it's an efficient way to fish. That's going to do it for this week's episode. Big thanks to Dave Coons for having us down there on Pool 10. Had a ton of fun and he showed me the ropes on doing a tactic I'd never done before, and we caught a lot of fish doing it. So stick around next week. We'll be off on the road somewhere chasing the next bite. We'll see you then. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at In-Depth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.